How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sun Wu and I make beats and today I want to have a look at the hidden drum synthesizer within your OPZ. Yes, you heard it right. There's a hidden drum synthesizer. Let's get right into it. All right, so before we get into creating the drum sounds, let's have a quick listen to this loop, which doesn't contain any drum samples, but only the synthesized drum sounds. <laughs> All right, very simple. As you can hear, these drums are not your classic 808 style analog drum sounds, nor are they hyper realistic acoustic drums, but they are very chip tuny and 8 bit sounding. Nevertheless, I think they sound like drum sounds. Let's listen to the isolated drum track. I'm gonna mute everything but my lead track, which in this case provides my drum synth. All right, there you heard it. These are drum sounds created using only one synthesizer track and using an internal synth engine, so no samples needed in this case to make chip tuny drum sounds. Before we create these drum sounds, it is important to choose the right synth engine. In this case, I chose the lead track and selected number two, which is my digital synth engine. It should show somewhere here. And I chose this synth engine because it has a lot of noise in it as well as a tonal aspect underneath. So the noise part can be used to create our hi-hats as well as part of the snare drum and the tonal aspects can be the kick drum and part of the snare drum. Easy as that. Okay, so let's create our drum sounds. First of all, we're gonna start with the hi-hat because that is very easy as a hi-hat is basically just a little bit of noise with an envelope if you make it easy for yourself. So we are gonna choose our highest note on the keyboard, press plus a little time and right here. And let's just put a step right there. And now we're gonna add the parameters until it sounds like a hi-hat. That already sounds quite like a hi-hat. Now let's change the envelope a little bit so it's more snappy. And there you have it, it's basically already a hi-hat. To give the hi-hat more of a harsh attack sound, I'm gonna turn my LFO to volume. And now the beginning is a little bit snappy because I'm using the one-shot LFO um, at a quite fast rate. Yeah, I think that's all right for our hi-hat sound. We can copy this over a few times now. Wonderful. From there on, we can maybe also create a little shaker sound. Since the hi-hat is a good starting point for a shaker sound, we're just gonna copy that over again, right here. And all I'm doing first of all is increase the attack time, making the decay longer, maybe the release too. Wonderful, and we got an open hat or shaker sound, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's see if the LFO changes anything. Why not use the vibrato on this one for some variety? 
All right, so now let's go about creating our kick drum. First of all, we're gonna go all the way down in terms of octaves and select a low note in order to get the nice bassy content for our kick drum. And now let's change some parameters. We are gonna start with the envelope. First of all, we want no attack time, instant transient, now we're going to turn down the decay and maybe the release as well a little bit. All right, now let's get to our synth parameters. Uh, we want to All right, sounds almost like a kick drum already. Now we're gonna use the filter to enhance the low end furthermore. So we're gonna use a high pass filter at a quite low cutoff point and then increase the resonance. All right, I think that's enough. And let's move on to the LFO and see if that can change something. On the LFO, again, I'm gonna use the one-shot LFO, the one-shot saw wave, because most drum sounds have a quick transient and then change to something else. So that's the ideal LFO shape for changing your drum sounds in this case. So we're gonna stay on the same shape and maybe just adjust which parameter is being affected by the LFO. Yeah. That sounds quite cool. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Maybe, maybe increase the release time a little bit. I think the kick drum is done for now. It sounds like an all right chip tune kick drum to me. Let's hear it again. And from the kick drum, we move on to our snare drum, which is the most difficult to synthesize in this case, but we do it nevertheless. We're gonna copy over our kick drum and then tweak the sounds once again. Starting with the synth parameters. Sorry for the very nasty sound. I'm gonna turn down the decay a little bit. Okay, I know it doesn't sound like a snare drum yet, but with a little trick we can make it sound like one. So for now it sounds like this. But if we play it just one half step lower, you can hear it gets that nice wooden sound at the beginning of the snare drum. And to further spice it up, let's just add a little bit of reverb. Okay, now let's copy this over here and copy some of the other steps. And that's already it for our drum loop. Let's hear it. Wonderful. And we made a whole drum loop using only one single track, using a synthesizer engine on the OPZ. And yes, of course, I know this type of sound won't suit everybody, nor will it suit every single song you make. In fact, it doesn't even suit my music. Nevertheless, I think it was an interesting exercise and it really showed me what kind of variety you can come up with on one single track, even with these simple OPZ synth engines, if you're using parameter locks. 
So this definitely inspired me to check out parameter locks more in future, use it on other synth engines, use it on my sample tracks more, and maybe I will make another video in future about this, who knows. But until then, I want to say thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And if you want to further support me, check out my coffee.com link. You can buy me a coffee or check out my Patreon. Both links in the description. And now let's add some further tracks to this beat and see what it sounds like in context. Or rather hear it.